Tony Valenzuela from Black Box TV and I have coffee. Um, the idea for Black Box TV came from, actually I was working on a project called Zombies and it was just like a fun little one-off and I thought it would be so cool if there was actually a channel that would house all this sort of content. So the idea for it came in Halloween of the year before last. But the, the name Black Box TV comes from the black box um, on YouTube when the video loads, so you get that black box. And I thought inside of this was this other world that people could never see into because YouTube's mostly filled with comedy and news and this kind of stuff. But in that black box there was another world waiting to come out. Um, uh, and so there's, we've had over, we've had over 5,000 submissions at this point. I, the, the biggest challenge has been going through all of those. So we've actually, we haven't used any of those ideas yet, but I've recently picked about eight or nine, and you'll start seeing those through the next, uh, through the next, um, not the next four episodes, but but further on. And honestly, for me, it's it's really about like, um, it's homage to Ray Bradbury, Stephen King, H.P. Lovecraft, um, the work of Stanley Kubrick, the work, the the work of early David Fincher. It's this, it's this kind of this this. This thing. It was. It's. It, it's so bizarre because I think it's never really been about the shooting, but always about the stories. And when I was like a kid, you know, um, I was I was selling uh, I was selling candy bars for student government. So I'd sit in front of Pick and Save and sell these like candy bars. And that's when I fell in love with Ray Bradbury and, and his short stories because I was sitting there in the cold, just like waiting and saying, you know, do you want to buy a candy bar for my student government thing? And um, I remember reading The October Game, which is a short story that he wrote, and it scared the shit out of me. I think I was like 11 years or 12 years old, and then I was just super into horror. I was raised in a really uh, religious um, uh, family, very religious background, and so it was always the us kind of versus them of the good and the bad. And I, and I love that the things that terrified me as a kid now are basically the content that I make and explore. Well, I mean, I, I love all of the episodes. They each represent a different part of me. Um, I think some episodes connect differently with the audience, obviously. But I think um, the, one, the first one that really stood out for me was episode three, Final Exit, because this kid, when he was running through this hospital, was sort of this subconscious nightmare that he's going through. But in the physical real world, the real world, he's actually he's actually fallen to the pool and hit himself. Hit him. He's actually fallen to the pool and hit his head. Um, for me, when I was sitting there and I was editing it, and I put in a song from this band called The Epilogues. I just started like bawling. Like I'm sitting in front of my. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting in front of my my computer, and that we weren't even in the studio. Then I was like in my kitchen, like my editing room in my kitchen, and I just start bawling because I knew what it was about. I knew what it was about. I, I understood what that story was about. I almost drowned when I was five. And I'm huge fans of theirs, obviously. I mean, I wouldn't work. I don't work with people that I whose work I don't like. Um, but so Phil, actually, I had a series called 2009: A True Story that um, that came out in 2008. It was this 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 sort of paranoid military sci-fi thing, and it happened. It's supposed to have happened in the year 2009, but we released them in 2008. So it was like a year into the future, kind of. And uh, and Phil like pimped out the series to his audience, and the show blew up, and that like that really changed my life. Got the agent William Morris went through all of that stuff, um, and you know we I, I remain friends with Phil, and now I work with Phil. This is actually his studio. We um, we create a lot of great stuff together. He, the inter the really interesting thing about YouTube is it's it's almost the time is almost over where where there's this great uh, this great innocence to all the friendships and all that sort of thing. That I met Justine um, at a party, mm -hmm. and um, the the coolest thing about Black Box is I get to work with my friends, and we all get to go into a world that's that's unfamiliar to us. So for each of the episodes, it really becomes this different world. So placing somebody in there who's almost as unfamiliar with that world as I am is awesome, because then we're just going in there and crafting it together. I shot with uh, Amon uh, last week. Uh, his name's Alpha Cat on YouTube, and he was like, you know, I'm, he's like, you know. Um, I went to the school uh, for performing arts. Like, I really want to do something different. And his acting was just like, like there's this point where his he just did that. You know, because he has this great smile and everything, and he's like this, and he just like locked into me. And I saw that behind his eyes there was so much going on. And that's what you see with a lot of the a lot of the people on the show that I work with. You see they they have comedy channels, but then you see on Black Box TV you see this definitely another part of them. 
So, so Shane's somebody that I've, I've always talked to and shared ideas with, especially with Black Box TV. Like, I'll, if I have an idea for something, I'll talk to him about it, and, and we share a lot of with, we share a lot of ideas together. And um, in fact, early on with Black Box TV, like nothing went up without him seeing the edit because I loved his feedback. Wow. Shane's like one of my best friends, and he's somebody that that inspires me, and I try to inspire and. Um, we like cheesy horror movies and we also like good horror movies, so we go to the, we, we share a lot of that stuff at Con. Shane is a really hard working director. He's like one yeah. of the hardest working guys on YouTube, and I have the same sort of insane attitude. We're really trying to create something really, really special. It's like everybody I'm around, including Phil, like we're all, we work very hard to create good content. Um, everybody has a different attitude about that, but that's ours. So with, with, um, with Shane, like literally my computer that you saw when you came in here, um, that computer was on for four days leading up to the upload, and there was always somebody on it. It was either me, or it was Shane, or it was Michael Gallagher, the director of that piece. Mm -hmm. And so we, that's, that's the thing, is like what excites me is that we, we are, there's not a lot of us, but it's the number is growing of those people who, are, who think that YouTube is more than just cat videos. Sure. And it's more than just like, it's more than just gags or parodies. It's like actually this whole world of new IPs and new ideas that's being created. Um, well, Black Box is obviously my main focus right now. Um, we're changing our we're changing our distribution. Distri we're changing our distribution of them. They're going to come out every two weeks now. Mm -hmm. So every other week you'll get a new episode for the rest of the year. And so I'll do like 23 episodes wow. this year. Um, but one of the th one of the things that I'm really excited about is there are some live experiences, um, some narrative live experiences that we are starting to work on now. Um, as far as they're going into pre pro, I've been working on them for about two and a half years. Um, there's there's something called Find Me and there's something called Trapped and both of these guys are are starting to gain traction. Oh, yeah, good? actually follow it through Black Box TV because everything I do will come through Black Box Got TV. It. And if you get a chance to check out the Black Box TV, um, the the live broadcast that we did from the Villisca Axe Murder House in Iowa, we wow. actually did it live and then there's a compilation of interactive videos that came out of that too.